Today we are going to review the Tudor Pelagos 39mm at long last. This has been out for about three months from the point of us filming this video. And I got it on my desk the other day and I thought, I need to review this. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison as always and it's been a while since we've since we've done an actual proper time on the wrist episode. That used to be what we specialized in. We would just review watch after watch after watch. But now it's only the watches that really excite me. that get the privilege to be featured on time on the wrist. And this Tudor Pelagos is exciting. Let's begin with the specs of this watch then, because that is essentially why you clicked on this video in the first place. Firstly, a comment just from picking it up, picking it off of there. It is insanely light. It is insanely light, and this is because it is in grade two titanium. The face and the bracelet is in grade two titanium, and this is obviously more durable than steel. And that is a really nice feature. Titanium has kind of a darker aesthetic than stainless steel, so it has quite a stealthy aesthetic, I would say. Let's put this on the scale. So this comes in at, and this is, this is surprising. So according to our scales, this comes in at 113 grams. That is crazy light. So our scales might be off by one or two grams, but this is roughly how much it weighs. And that is so light, guys. Other watches, especially diving watches, typically weigh maybe 168 grams, 164 grams, give or take. So this is a huge chunk below the weight of those other typical watches. So just bear that in mind when you pick this up. With that said, titanium is obviously more durable than steel and everyone needs a titanium model in their collection. I do really like titanium. And on that note, we need to pause this video to bring to you our biggest giveaway yet. This is the 20K giveaway. It is a Tissot PRX light green, which in my opinion is the most attractive Tissot PRX out. And all you need to do for your chance to win is firstly, hit that subscribe button. Secondly, comment with what is on your wrist today. And thirdly, head to our Chisholm Hunter Watches Instagram page and drop us a follow. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. It is truly heartwarming and this is my gift to you. Now we move on to the specs of this watch. The case measurement comes in at 39 millimeters, as you would have seen from the title of this video. And we're going to touch on that a little bit later. We're going to discuss whether I think this watch is that little bit too small. Before we do that though, we're going to talk about the rest of this watch and we're going to begin with the thickness of this model. So according to our digital calipers, this watch comes in at 11.8 millimeters in thickness, which is actually really pleasant, especially for a diving model that is waterproof to 200 meters. Moving on to the case and the bracelet material on this watch. As stated before, it comes in grade two titanium. And this grade two titanium is satin brush to maintain that dark, stealthy diving watch approach. Now, titanium is obviously darker and harder. It's a harder material than stainless steel. And it's actually harder to work with. It's harder to craft from, hence the slightly elevated price of this watch. But in my opinion, titanium is worth it. From my personal point of view, what I've seen in my watch collection um, is me damaging watches. Not on purpose, of course, but I am a bit clumsy. And as a videographer and photographer, I do a lot of travel, a hell of a lot of travel. And I tend to kind of knock my watches up. Um, so a titanium watch would actually be really beneficial for me. And now, the, is this the one or is it not? I, I don't know but titanium is definitely something that I'm looking at. The bracelet on this watch is pretty darn sexy, and I actually have a Tudor Black Bay sitting at home, and I'm a huge fan of the Tudor bracelets. I think they're honestly awesome. Now, if you look at the back of the watch, it has the Tudor T-Fit clasp, and it has a safety latch just there with a deployment clasp, and it also has diving extensions for if you want to put it over a diving wetsuit or whatever it is. On that note, this watch also comes with a complimentary black rubber strap. Now, I haven't actually seen the black rubber strap in person. I've only seen the bracelet model, but the black rubber strap from the photos looks absolutely incredible. I love how it slots really comfortably in between the lugs, and I love how the black plays against that dark titanium feel, that stealthy titanium feel. On top of that, I would be scared that I'd scratch this beautiful titanium with a rubber strap. However, I wouldn't scratch the rubber strap. So my preference would be the rubber strap. Let's move on quickly to the face, the bezel, and also the movement of this watch. And before I go on to that, if you want to try this watch on without 
leaving the comfort of your own home. I know, sounds crazy, but you can do it. And there's actually a place where you can do it. And Chisholm Hunter have been working on this for over a year. All you need to do is go onto the Chisholm Hunter website, click this product where official stock is of Tudor, take a photo of your wrist, and it will automatically Photoshop the, 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 the watch on your wrist. So you'll be able to see if it's too small for you or if it's perfect. Bezel on this model is absolutely unbelievable. It is in grade two titanium. It has pretty nice teeth around the side. It's very easy to grip. And actually, I know that that sounds like a basic thing, but some diving watches don't get it right. They, they have, they, they, they lean more into the stylistic aspect of the bezel instead of the functionality. Whereas Tudor here have lent into that functionality. If you can imagine someone in their big diving suit, or wet suit, sorry, they need to, to be able to turn it easily in these big, thick gloves. And this bezel, yeah, it's functional. It also has a sunray satin finished ceramic inlay on the inside, which is in black. It's a very, it's almost like a, like a textured black, a matte kind of black, and it plays wonderfully with the white numerals and indices that are on it. It is honestly, the contrast on this dial is so easy to read. And it's actually quite smart because I think on smaller watches, 39 mil, or if you go below that, they need more contrast because they're a little bit smaller. You need to read them more clearly, clearly so they need that contrast. So on a final note on the bezel, it also has Super Luminova, which we'll show you in a second, but listen to this, right? Is that not the most satisfying clicks you've ever heard? That, I don't know, maybe it's just a watch nerdy weird thing, but it's cool. The dial has a black sunray satin finish with a sandblasted texture added over that. It's really, really contrasting with the monoblock uh, Superluminova numerals or hour markers rather. There's not numerals on this watch. And what I love about those monoblock hour markers is they almost don't have cupping to them. When you look at normal watches or, or, or other sports watches, hour markers, they have a black border to them sometimes, or a white border, depending on what the watch is, and they don't have that on Tudor. It's almost like it's a 3D effect. It's, it's, it's really cool. The hands on this model are the iconic snowflake hands that we've grown to love from Tudor. And also, I actually have the snowflake hands on my Tudor Black Bay ETA sitting at home. It's the Heritage ETA. It's one of the older versions. I love that. Uh, to add to that, it also has a really nice splash of red at the six o'clock mark with the logo Pelagos on it, just so you're reminded that you're cool. But enough of my chatter, let's have a closer look at this Super Luminova and see what you think. As you can see, the loom shines in bright blue and it contrasts wonderfully with that bezel. Actually, the loom on the bezel is really, really, really nice. The monoblock kind of material or style that they've used just makes the loom look 3D. It's pretty epic. Now that we've covered the face and the bezel, let's quickly move on to that beautiful movement. But before we do that, actually, let's look at the, the crown because I've totally, I've totally forgotten about the crown. To be honest, there's not much to say about the crown because it's pretty perfect. It's perfectly proportioned in comparison to the actual watch head, the case of the watch. I'm a huge fan of the crown and the crown guards. It just seems perfectly proportioned to me. On the note of the crown, what does the crown on your watch look like today? It is time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition, which of course is the wrist check. What is on your wrist today? I love seeing all the weird and wonderful watches that you guys leave in the comments. On my wrist today, I've got the Tissot PRX green dial, the forest green dial, and it's a pretty epic model. The movement in this model is the manufacturer caliber MT5400. This is an in-house movement to Tudor and it is COSC certified. Actually, according to Tudor's website, it achieves 40% above COSC certification. It is of course self-winding with a bi-directional rotor system and has a power reserve of approximately 70 hours. And now that we have covered everything you need to know about this really handsome watch, let's sum it up. Let's discuss whether it's a little bit too small for me. In my opinion, diving watches should be chunky watches. They should be bigger watches. And actually I have diving watches at home that come in at about 42 millimeters. And yes, actually I would say this is maybe slightly too big for me. I would. I honestly believe that that's maybe that just a little bit too big. But I think this is that little bit too small. I think the sweet spot is between 40 and 41 millimeters 
for diving watches. Now, you may disagree, but it's just because I have 6.5 inch wrists. So this is that little bit too small for me, whereas my other models, my other watches that come in at 42, or maybe that teeny bit too big. I think the gap in the market for Tudor, and what I would love to see from Tudor, is a 40 or 41 millimeter variant of this watch. And between this and the Tudor Pelagos 42, I would probably go with the 42. On that note, I do think that the styling of this watch, the, 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 the thought that has gone into the styling, the sportiness of this watch, the modernness of this watch is bloody beautiful. And I don't say that lightly. I think that they have absolutely nailed it, but I would just love to see it slightly bigger. But that's just my opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Time on the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always, and it's pretty good to be back filming Time on the Wrist. I think what we've decided is only to do Time on the Wrist episodes for those watches that deserve it. And this watch definitely deserved a Time on the Wrist. If you've enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. We'll be back in a couple of days or follow the Chisholm Hunter Watches Instagram page where we post behind the scenes of the studio, what goes on, and mostly watches. I'll see you soon.